G'day and welcome to the new hobby room. Yes, I finally moved. We're busy as a bloody wombat tunneling for a route, I tell you. But um, finally in the new house, finally got the new stash and, well, it's a whole stash really, but you know, everything set up. Look, I'll give you a quick gander, right? Um, um, there's, there's paints. There's, there's lots of paints over here, right? There's paints. Uh, behind me, there's, there's, well, that's my workbench. Right, it's, it's a workbench. You'll see more of that soon over the coming months, you know. And stash, 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 stash. More stash? No, no. That's actually a mirror. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel like I've got twice as many kits, you know. It makes me feel like there's thousands of bloody kits here. It's great, it's great. Anyhow, the purposes of this video, right, is that um, suddenly in the mail, there's bloody big package arrived, right? And, and, and this came all the way from Germany. Okay, for my good friend, Hammy Cole or Michael, whatever his name is, right? Uh, I'll put a link to his YouTube channel here. He's a bloody good modeler. Pisses all over everything I do, you know, but that's not hard. Uh, but he can't play banjo. No, can't play banjo to save his life. No. Anyhow, this bloody big box, right? I'm going to show you what he sent me. Oh, on, on the T-shirt? Yeah, well, we'll piss that off. That's a dare because of the Becker. Yeah, um... The Becker dared that he'd um, get me this T-shirt and I'd wear it. But, of course, he picked the one colour that I don't wear. I mean, I'm winter colours, you know. I'm winter colours. It's reds, it's blacks, you know. It's whites, it's those sort of colours. It's, it's blues. I don't even wear fucking green. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look what's inside this great big box. Yeah, just to give you an idea, that's the bounty, right? And we've been building that and there will be more videos. This is the new box. It's bloody huge. All right, let's rip it open and see what the hell we got here. I'll piss this bounty off. Um, over here, gently. The bounty is in. It's, it's, here's a photo. Right, the bounty is happening. It's happening. Right, we'll, we'll pull and we'll pull and we'll pull. Yeah, there's a lot of that that goes on on this channel. You, you ought to see the uh, workbench and new kits videos. Lots of pulling there. We'll pull and we'll pull. Oh, and, 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 fantastic. Uh, oh, um, hang on. No, this is more like it. <laughs> Bloody hell, I'll even have to come back here. Look at that. Look at that. It's a Batavia. Yeah, it's a little bit worn, you know, it's a little bit worn out from his journey all the way down from Germany. A Germany, you try saying that with your bloody false teeth then. Okay. Um, yes, we do have a few aeroplanes here. There's occasional bloody aircraft that fly over, but there's no bloody Chinese laundry, I can tell you that. Yes, there's no bastards here parking in my driveway. There's no plumber's cracks outside my window. Enough of that. If you're on Facebook, you know about all the bullshit I can put up with the last place. Anyhow, enough of that. Hamilcar, Michael, sent me a Batavia. Now, I've been trying to get this kit in Australia. I have been trying and trying and looking, and I, I nearly snaffled one at one of the um, one of the model shows, you know. I saw it on a, on a list of what a guy was selling. I went, yeah, no worries. I'll get down there. We'll grab it. I didn't think I'd need to reserve it, you know. Not everyone's after sailing ships, and the bloody thing went really quickly. So I bugger, bugger, bugger. I look everywhere. All over Australia, everywhere. Couldn't find it. I got on my mate um, Michael in Germany. I said, look, it's a Revel kit in Germany. Do you think you could find one? And he not only found one, he sent it to me. It's, um, you know, what a guy. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, mate. Yeah, enough of this waffling. Because <coughs> it's making me cough because I'm a bit crook. It's all the bloody dust from all the, the moving and unpacking all my bloody boxes, you know. Yes, right. Okay. Let's have a look inside this Revel Batavia box. Now, some of you asked me if I got a bigger mat. Yes, I have. That's an that's an A one now. That's an A one. It's, it's it's as big as you seem to be able to get with mats. It's bloody huge. And as you can see, it dwarfs a few kits I've got on there. Got a few things I'm getting organised to go in for the big competition here in Brisbane. The QMHE. Yeah, I've got a few things. A motorbike and a submarine. Anyhow, um, what we're more interested in is this Revel kit and Batavia. And as you can see, it's all there in that crumpled box. <laughs> Surprisingly, it, it all survived, despite the fact that the uh, international posties managed to play trampoline on it. Yeah, bastards. All right, let's um, get off wobbly cam and let's have a look at the sprays. All right. What do you get in the box? Well, everything's in bags. Well, the hull halves are in bags and everything's um, preserved. We'll get them out shortly, but they look nice. Um, also get another big bag here. Um, those seem to have a rather interesting curve to the sprue. It's a curved sprue. I, I hope it was meant to be that way, and that's not a uh, effort of the posties. Who knows? Tell you what, let's open these packages up, and then we'll get to see everything that's inside. 
So bringing that first screw out again, this has my hull halves. And as you can see there, they're huge. I mean, the bounty is about that wide, okay? And that's in 1100 scale. This is 1140 scale, or was it 1150th? And, and, and it's, um, you know, so it's a smaller scale, but it's a bigger ship. So it's about 50% bigger, um, even though it's a reduced scale. Oh, yeah. Look, it's just a big Dutch ship, right? <laughs> Yeah, this was a Dutch trading ship, right, the Batavia, and it has quite a big history, and I'll get into that shortly, because it's quite famous here in Australia, because the thing actually um, got dashed ashore here. Uh, well, more about that later. But um, look, the kit is flash-free. Try to say that with your blade teeth in Flash-free. Uh, let's put up with a few cars going by here. The, the good old um, council has actually decided, Oh, Harry, you like roadworks. You had plenty of it at the last place. Let's fix the street for you, mate. We know you'll love it, bastards. So, yeah, they um, they have moved in. They're fixing the street. But it's nowhere near as noisy as the last place. Right. Um, hopefully getting a bit of a gander there. I'm trying to sort of show you things. But look how crisp that is. There's nothing like the bloody bounty, right? Uh, admittedly, the bounty is a very old, old, old kit. Um, this is um, mid-90s, about 96, I think, was it was moulded. Very crisp, very clean, very detailed. Um, it, it's, it's you know, bloody nice, bloody nice. I mean, I don't think we've looked at... Let's have a look. Can we see this? Can you see the detail there? It would be nice if these were parts that you glue on, but they have done a beautiful job of moulding them. See, even on here, these little figureheads, right? So, uh, tiny little cherubs here. Yeah. So that's that's looking pretty good right off the bat, and um, those halves should build into a very impressive sized ship. I mean, even look at the little bloody, you know, the little lifeboat they've got, and it's it's the same size, if not bigger, than the bounties. And yet again, this scale is at least one third, you know, one third less. All right, let's move on. Right, here's the next sprue, and um, again, beautifully moulded. Lots of things going on. Now this is where this bend has got to me. It, um, the, the sprue is bent. Now, on closer examination, there are stress points there on the sprue trees. So I would say this is an act of Mr. Postman. So the British bastards were obviously throwing this around and chucking it about everywhere and bouncing up and down the aeroplane and all the rest of it. You know? But it doesn't look like it's damaged anything. In fact, the stress points where it has bent um, is independent of the parts so far. Let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. Now, something of note. Look at this. This is the... Um, the stern. Let's um, let's get a look at that. Now look at the detail there, right? Again, those little bloody cherubs. Look at the little bastards. They're um, they're nice, and there's a coat of arms. Everything's there, and and it's so finely moulded in here. I mean, I think there's a tiny bit of tiny bit of flash in there. You can barely see it. it it'll it'll come out with you know just waving the knife at it. But really, um, the the quality. And the uh, the moulding is absolutely excellent. Now have a look here at this um, grating. This is in the front of the ship. This is on the heads, you know. And um, that's a part that they could muck up. And that's a part you normally get heaps of flash in. But look at that. It is brilliant. You won't have to um, do much at all. I think there's probably only one I can see I might have to clean out. One of those tiny squares. And even then, that might be my imagination. Because doesn't that look brilliant? And then we have a look at the deck. And look at the wood grain on that. Now, they might be a bit exaggerated for the scale. I mean, the planks look fairly wide. <laughs> you know, you've got to multiply them by 140 to get to the actual size. And that grain looks more like the grain you'd get probably in a small piece of wood at one-to-one -one scale. But look, they've gone to the effort to um, to give you something interesting that'll take a wash. So, so that's good, you know, even if it is fairly unrealistic. But um, I don't know. I don't mind it. I like it. Now here are some railings where on the bounty I was spending forever cleaning the bloody things up and getting rid of all the flash and everything. But look at those, look at those. And they look like they've got more little bloody something or others. It actually looks like bloody bunch of assholes. But I don't know. I don't know what they are. It looks like bums to me. <laughs> um, but they are ornately detailed and beautifully moulded. So we should have no problem with those whatsoever. Here's the other big sprue, and this one's bent, well, not as much, but it does have a bend in it. But again, things seem to have survived. So you can see the um, the masts here, which are in two halves. Interesting, that's very much like a hella thing. Very much like a hella thing to put things in two halves. But they've um, remained straight, 
and everything's bent around them. At least that's see how it appears. So we'll see how we go there. Similarly over here, you've got another, this would be probably the main mast, looks pretty big. And they've, um, they've gone to the trouble of um, actually molding the rope on for you. So I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it there? The, um, the rope's actually molded on. So I don't know if the camera will focus. There we go. Okay, so you actually got molded on rope. That's rather cute. So all we have to do is wash that. Now, yeah, moving on, there's so much to look at here. Look at these little crow's nests. Aren't they nice? Aren't they lovely? They are uh, nicely detailed. We have got lots and lots and lots of blocks for the, for the tackle, right? And the stanchions here, basically all the belay points, look at those. No need to clean up. I mean, the bounty, I spent forever cleaning these sort of things up. Hours and hours. These are all fine. Uh, beautifully moulded little um, the trucks for the cannons. The cannons, again, clean as a whistle. Look, the kit is just gorgeous. It really is. It should be a joy to build. Spars and yard arms look really good. They're very clean. I mean, we can just cut this out and glue it together. Oh, we've got to paint it, yeah, of course, and rig it, and, you know, put some sails on it. But you know what I mean, you know? I mean, even, look, we get a lantern. I had to make the lanterns for the uh, bounty. So look at that, you know, more stanchions, all right, more belay points. So look at the dead eyes here. Look at them. Beautifully moulded. Beautifully moulded. Hopefully we'll be able to get the thread through those. That is terrific. And the capstan. Look at that. It's already modelled the arms in. And they're correctly done as flat beams. It is just lovely. Everywhere I look on this, everything I look at has crispness and detail it just looks terrific and this is like chalk and cheese to that bounty kit i mean although i've made that bounty come up fairly nice i think so you know it's it's really looking good but i've spent a lot of time and i had to do a lot of things which i enjoyed doing but this kit is worlds apart and admittedly it's many years different in the molding um this is beautiful this is a lovely kit the last spray you get are the red lines wow well, the shrouds and the red lines, as I explained before. The red lines are only the horizontal ones, actually. The vertical lines are shrouds. It's so beautifully done, and the red lines themselves are actually very well moulded. You'd get away with them, quite frankly. If I didn't have my rat line tool and I wasn't keen about doing it myself, I'd just use these. They'll actually look fantastic on this model. No problem at all. One of the parts that you get in this kit, it's quite nice, but I won't use it, is... Um, these plastic sails. Now that's too bad, they're that form, they're very thin. They certainly do the job, there's no problem there. They've um, also suffered a bit of wear and tear with the trip. So um, anybody wants some vac form sails? <laughs> I'll send them to you. I'll, um, I'll need to measure them all up first so that I can make my cloth ones and hopefully my seamstress. Tell her Jess. Yes, Jess would um, sew them up again for me. All right, let's see what else we can find. And finally, in the box, you get these little tidbits. <laughs> you get a little bit of um, cord here, which you can run the anchor with. You get your um, running rigging line, and you get your standing rigging line. Okay, so that's quite good. And they've spied a lot of it. So obviously they think you're going to be putting a lot of bloody string on this thing. And they give you all the colours. Look at that. I assume they're acrylic, you know, water-based colours. We'll give them a try. I haven't really used Revell colours, ever. We don't really sort of see them here. I'm sure they are in the shops. I just don't see them, you know. And um, they give you a baby, a tiny little Rebel Contactor, right? It's, it's much smaller than the one that I normally get and break the bloody end off because it's forever getting bloody bumped and snapped and everything. So um, that'll be fun. I'll use that. I'll certainly enjoy playing with that. See if I can uh, try not to bugger it up. So, all right, let's have a look at the instructions and briefly go through that and see how it all goes together. Let's take a look at the instructions. And... Um, Rebel, as usual, gives you the black and white version of the uh, the beautiful artwork that was on the cover of the box, albeit in colour. And then they give you a bit of a, a history. Now, it's it's a bit of an abbreviated history, and they, they gloss over some of the major points. And, and that being that, yes, it was its maiden voyage. Yes, this ship, 1628. Yes, it did leave Amsterdam. It was heading for Java, Indonesia. And, you know, it was part of the spice trade for the, um, for the Dutch. That's all true. But what they don't put in there is the... E intrigue in the story in there which is nearly as interesting as mutiny on the bounty in that there were a faction in the crew some of the well not officers but some of the certainly the um, major seamen there they um that had plans from the start to mutiny and take over the ship 
and basically to take the spices and keep them for themselves and to make a whole lot of money. There was a whole thing going on. And um, during all that, yes, it did crash on a reef out near Western Australia. And a lot of people were drowned. 40 of them were drowned. The rest, uh, 300 or of the crew and um, passengers managed to make it to an island. And um, there was certainly a lot of turmoil there because they, they had a contingent of, of soldiers on the on the ship because this thing's fairly heavily armed. It's got quite a lot of cannons in it. And the um, Dutch had to do that to protect their uh, investment and their, their ships and their basically their spices because they were worth quintillions. Yes, well, lots of money in their day, you know, literally um, even millions of dollars in their day, really. Uh, it was a very, very, very lucrative thing for the Dutch to go and get spices from the East Indies, pay those guys like a couple of shekels, shoot them all the way back to uh, Europe and then sell them for, you know, two, three, four, five hundred times what they bought them for. They were making bloody, you know, money hand over the fist, those little uh, Dutchies. But anyhow, enough of that. So the actual story goes that um, the, on the island here, basically they were the soldiers trying to sort of keep things sorted out and straight. They were the, the crew that were loyal to the captain. They were trying to do one thing. There was crew that wasn't loyal to the captain, and they were the ones that were trying to mutiny and fracture. There were fights, there were battles. There was all kinds of shit going on. And um, at one stage, uh, a lot of the mutineers went across to another island and the soldiers chased them. Look, you can read up about it. Have a look at Wikipedia. In fact, it's quite fascinating. In the end, the captain and um, a lot of the um, the senior crew managed to to basically hop in a lifeboat and almost do a similar thing to um, to what Bly did with the bounty. And they managed to get to um, to a port and get to some civilization, and get some people to come back and help rescue them. And in the end, the mutineers basically, I think they all got hung. Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a pretty end for them. But anyhow, you can read about the history. All I'm saying is, this again is another ship, an ancient sailing ship that's very significant for Australia because the um, the wreck was there in Western Australia and they dug up and they found quite a quite a lot of the, the bits that had survived. And then um, back in Holland, they actually rebuilt the ship using some of the leftover um, original parts. And so there is an actual replica of life-size of the Batavia to be found. In fact, I'll tell you where it is here. Let me have a read. Blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, it lies in anchor at Lestat. All right. So there you go. You can look that up too. But even, even then you can, you can even see a, um, uh, basically a drone flying all over this replica, which is invaluable for us model makers because we, we see every single detail. Now, enough of all that. What do you get? What do you get? What do you get? Well, you get usual blurb, safety advice and all that, which we'll probably ignore. You get some lovely decals, right? which is to go on the stand and everything. I apologise for the car noise here today. It's quite prevalent and it's unusual because the council is here doing some roadworks up the road. They've detoured everyone. They've closed off that street and detoured it. And guess which street they've detoured everyone down? Yes, my lovely little quiet street, which is normally so lovely. And, you know, I could I could wrap it on for hours. We wouldn't hear a sound. Now I'm getting everybody, you know, all the Chinese laundry are driving past here today. Um, flags, get some lovely flags. They're quite good. So we've got all that to play with. Yep. Just carefully put that out of the way. Instruction is going to be typical rebel. Printed in Poland this time, would you believe? Printed in Poland. Usual do's, don'ts, you know, all the rest of it. You can read all about that, how to do things. Um, you get the usual rebel set of how to mix all your colours. But then again, they've provided their own paints. So I don't know. Are they, they're mixing their own ochres and paints. Well, maybe they are. Well, who knows? Have a look at that when we build. I won't go into that. You get a sprue map, which is pretty good. The sprue map's got there. There's not a lot of parts. There's two pages for the sprue map. So probably about as many parts as the as the bounty. Maybe a few more. Um, so there you go. So as far as I can tell, we haven't lost any parts. I've um, What I've been through so far. I'll have another look in detail, but I don't. there was nothing loose in the bag when I when I pulled the bags apart and they were sealed. They were well and truly sealed. So that's quite good. And then we get into the instructions in earnest. I don't know why Ernest always gets a go with the instructions. We're getting the instructions in Harry. <laughs> um, you get painting guides all the way along, so you can know all the different colours to put in. You, um, you've you got to basically build up all your, um, your um, what do you get these things called, bulwarks? Yeah, um, basically, they're the sections between the decks, you know, that basically wall off each deck. And they're all different colours, that's good. Uh, there's those lovely railings. Uh, it's all there. It's all there. You get, you know, a lot of it is paint, paint, paint. Like with anything like this, with one of these period ships, paint, 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 cut, glue, assemble. And that's basically the order of things. There's a lot of that. Oh, and then rig. And then rig until your, fing your, buddy, your fingers bleed. 
Okay, so what have we got now? We've got a bloody jet flying over. We'll just talk over that. Yeah, everything's happened today. It's planes, trains and bloody automobiles. But honestly, this place is usually quiet. They've just decided, ah, oh, Harry's doing a video. Let's all go over and have a look. Bastards, bastards. This is the price of celebrity, you see. This is what happens when you're famous. People won't leave you alone. <coughs> um, yep, you've got three cannons aside, which are going to go through little portholes. So that's lovely. And there are little steps. There isn't a deck in there. I could build a deck in there, but honestly, I don't think you're going to be able to see in much. I might sort of have a look at that when I build it. And those little pedestals, they're probably all you need. Probably all you need. You know, see, that goes in. Your main deck then goes over the top. That's it. You've then got your stern. You've got your, um, your rudder. That goes on. They're all separate pieces, which is which is lovely. Um, then you're putting in those, those um, bollocks, or whatever you want to call them. Basically, just the... The walls between decks, they go in. You've already pre banded all those. You've already pre banded your decks and done all your wood effects. You have to do a lot of pre, 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 pre. It's all pre. Then they say, get out your rubber bands. Some wax some rubber bands around this thing and let it dry. Very good advice, Mr. Rivel. Very good. Very good indeed. Okay, so basically step six, we're just getting our hull together, which is quite good. I actually follow that order. And then we get to start putting in some of the detail parts. And again, you'd paint those before you put them in. So um, that lovely piece here which is the grating that goes over here on the headrails. Um, that is absolutely gorgeous. And then you've got your, um, I know the name of these, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look it up another day. Um, but basically these are little posts that stick out and they basically anchors hang off them. And you've got the bottom here of where your rat lines are going to run. You've got all your stanchions and your belay points and everything. That's very nice. There's that beautiful capstan that goes in. More belay points and things and stanchions and the rest of it. And then you come down here, step 10. We've got a lovely little two-piece um, anchor. I don't think I showed you that, but it's beautifully moulded. It actually looks it actually looks correct. It does. And we'll be using that larger cord um, to tie the anchor off. And then here you can see they, they actually show you how to run your threads through those tiny little gaps and holes, which is terrific. I mean, we didn't get that on the bounty. We just got boom, a blob, you know, just a straight, straight bit of um, plastic. And I had to drill some holes through them. But uh, correctly, as they've done, there was little slots. So they're all there. So kudos to uh, Revel. You've done a good job. Ladders, things, more um, bases for rat lines. Ladders, 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 bits and pieces. A few little wobbly bits. I don't even know what they are. Who knows? Who cares? Uh, making up your um, lifeboat. So there you go. Painting instructions all the way. And we even get a rudder. Um, we get a rudder. Remember, I had to scratch that on the previous one, and I had to scratch the planking. That's already on here, already moulded in, done. Look, this is just lovely. I won't be able to scratch anything. I'll have to actually have to build it. <laughs> um, and then, you know, your lifeboat's gone. Looks like you've got two. Yeah, you've got two little boats, a big one and a small one. Some some last little stanchion points there. And um, there should be cannons on the deck. We haven't got to that. You've got a nice little picture here. They've got a little question mark. Oh, look, they're, they're saying here... Um, they're saying here, look, you could you could put your uh, lifeboats on the deck, or if you're doing a diarrhea, a uh, diorama, you you, um, you could have them trailing behind, and um, basically roped and towed. That's nice, isn't it? Good thinking, Mr. Rebel. All right, here we go. We can actually see this one. It's nice and wide and big. All the painting instructions for um, that beautiful transom astern, right? And there's so much detail. There's all these little cherubs and critters. And, oh, they, you know, they used to go crazy with their boats, didn't they? They used to paint them up and do all kinds of bloody beautiful things. There's some there's some decals, I think. That number three refers to a decal that goes there. Or we can paint it. Um, there's the lion that um, is basically its figurehead. That's lovely. We'll paint that up. And um, there's a mermaid here. Oh, look, there's stuff everywhere. This is a gorgeous ship. It really is. It really is a gorgeous little ship. And you've got all your colours and all your instructions um, as to what to do there. So then we get into the masts. Here. All we've done is built the bottom of the boat. So we've got masts here. And as I said, all those parts look lovely and clean. There, there should be no problem putting that together. Two pieces, mm, see how we go. I don't normally like that. Like if I get a two piece barrel, I throw it in the bin if I'm doing armor and I go and buy a metal one. We'll see, I mean, I could make my own, but these are beautifully tapered. They're all correctly set up. We'll see, we'll put one together and see how it goes. Um, if it fits nicely, we'll use it. If not, we'll, we'll ditch it and I'll, um, I'll basically buy a piece of tapered dowel and I'll do it myself. So that's all there. There's more, you make more of those, so you know. All there, all easy to fire. Very nice instructions. Very nice instructions. And then you would put your masts in, all right? 
exactly the order I would do it, but it changed the order in the instructions is how I would build a ship. It's quite often I differ, but so far it looks pretty well. There we go, there's a bit of traffic. Hello, yes, yeah, I'm doing a video. Yeah, thank you. Um, so there we go. Finally, they say put the lantern on. It's a good idea. I'd leave it till later on. I probably wouldn't even put it on after the rigging because knowing me, I'd knock the bloody thing off. And then we're putting in our rat lines, okay, which, as I say, the kits supplied ones are actually quite usable. Quite usable indeed. But I will use my, my wonderful new little rat line tool and, and I'll do my own. There will be a video out that shortly. I keep promising it. There's been all this moving house bullshit. Then they've got the your standing rigging. Okay, it's exactly right. That's what I would do next, standing rigging. They even include tips on how to do the crow's feet here, which is a complicated piece of rigging that goes into the base of the crow's nest up here. And there's also another one, smaller one there. That's lovely. I intend to do that on the bounty, but it's not in the instructions anywhere. I had to research rigging. Um, to find out about that because you have a um, you know, have a mainstay and then you have a safety stay you see and then you have these crow's feet which is just a whole lot of little lines right which obviously they take tension and to um, to take the load it's actually one continuous line and she runs up down and through and um, through the rest of it so it's like a big pulley so it basically does allow everything to move and it won't snap because it's basically a, an entire pulley mechanism. I'll explain more about that when I read the bounty and I'll show you how to do all that. So that's all correct. I'd agree with all that. Spitting on everything, Harry Houdini. Um, all that's right. And you get all these little dead eyes and blocks and tackle-y things. They're all in the kit. They supply all of those. So there's hardly any need to get aftermarket. As you can see there, they even show a detail of how to basically splice this whole bloody thing together. Okay. And then here in part 25, we get um, the stays. They all go in. So it's quite comprehensive here, showing you exactly how to rig and mount all your stays and where they sit. That is very good. I would just follow that. I wouldn't even need to do any further research. I probably will, but I'd say these guys have got it spot on. That looks exactly right to me. It does. And I was doing a lot of research for the bounty, so I'm getting pretty familiar with all these um, square rig ships. Um, then they're talking about cutting out your sails. Well, you know, I'll make cloth ones and um, showing you how to, to sew them on. That's rather nice. They're using a run to do theirs. Hadn't thought of doing that with mine. I might try that. Mine's a little bit different the way I did it. Then they're showing you the entire rig and where all the sails go. Okay, so um, it's all straightforward. It's all easy to follow. Beautiful, clear drawings. Very good. Very good, Mr. Mr. Revel. Um, step 27 here, now we're getting into some of the running rigging and they're showing you all the sheet lines here, which which good, these are for pulling up, pulling up the sails. And I kind of explained those sort of in the video where I showed how to make cotton sails and how to scrunch them up and basically furl them. Now when I showed that, they the whole principle of furling is because of these, basically these lines, right? These lines here which pull the sails up, okay? So um, yeah. So they're actually all indicated. This is getting into some quite complex rigging here, but everything is shown, shown how to basically use the pulleys, how to do it all, how to belay it on the stanchion points. Everything is shown in detail. That is fantastic. That is just so good. It might scare some people off, but honestly, it's just all pretty simple. Once you've done one, you just keep repeating the process. Uh, more here, more here on basically how to, to run other lines. So these are the, the rest of your running rigging. Um, which a lot of people would do, which is just, you know, usually for, for trimming the angle of your sails. Most people usually do that one, you know, do the line from the end of the yard arms and they pull that back to whatever point usually they pull it back to a mast. Most people would do that as a, as a sort of pretend rig. Actually showing you how to do it correctly and with the line running down to the belay point, right on the stanchion down there, which is exactly how it would be on the real ship. So they're showing you the correct rigging method. So that is terrific. I'm going to attempt to do all of this. There's no reason why I couldn't. Um, and in fact, they're not leaving out much. I mean, there's a lot more to rigging. Believe me, if you rig a ship exactly like the real ones, well, <laughs> it's just nowhere to put your fingers. It would be, um, it'd be a hell of a thing to dust, let's put it that way. So um, there you go. And there it is. And there it shows you what you would end up with if you follow their rigging guide. And that is quite a lot of rigging. That is really quite a lot of rigging. More rigging than most people would try and attempt. But you know me, I'll do it. <laughs> I hope we'll do that. And that's probably about the level. Um, maybe not even quite as far as I was going with the bounty. So interesting. It sort of um, encourages me more to pull my finger out. Here they've shown you to put in the um, flags. And look at that. They're pointing forward. Yes, finally got it right. 
Yeah, sailing ships, the wind is up their ass. That's right. The flags go forward. They don't go backwards, you dickheads. Some, some people put their flags pointing the other way. and Trying to explain to them, the wind's going this way, mate. Um, but anyhow, they got it right. They got it right. I'm really impressed. I am impressed with this kit so many, so many ways. The moulding is crisp and clear. It looks like it should go together fairly easily. I mean, you know, you can sort of see that. It, it looks like it's engineered fairly well. We'll see. We'll see. Proofs in the building. The instructions are detailed, correct, and they're in order. They're in the order that I would build a ship. So, so far, very, very happy with what I'm seeing. But again, until we build it, we really don't know. So this will come. It may be a while because I've really got to get the bounty out of the way. And with all the delays I've had and the things I need to do, we probably wouldn't be looking at this till, till early next year. But um, it's definitely on my list. I think um, I was going to build another sailing ship next, but now the Batavia has, has sparked my interest. And because it's basically been sort of semi-gifted to me from, um, from Michael, thanks mate, I will make the effort and build it. Because if someone sends me a gift, I try and build it. I try. I'm very trying, as a lot of people will tell you. Anyhow, look, well, that's it. I, I, I need a coffee. I really do. Um, that has been a lot to look at. And this is an incredible kit. So um, if you want a sailing ship, you've got a few under your belt. Like I wouldn't build this if you hadn't built a few other sailing ships. Because there's a lot going on in this one. But if you had a few sailing ships under your belt, this one looks bloody nice. All right, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Denny.